are up now, rolling and rocking hard for you people. Welcome to Backstage Pass. I am Mark Connors, your host. We are now broadcasting all around the globe. This show is for musicians. And um, phones are open right now, 760-747-8243. We have an interview coming up, though, shortly with Hollywood Yates. You guys remember Hollywood Yates? He um, was Wolf on The American Gladiator. And um, also, he um, has done some acting and some hosting and stuff like that all around the country. And... um, we have him on the show coming up here just in a few minutes. I'm going to give him a call um, at his ranch in, I believe he's in Cal- just a little bit north of Hollywood, I believe. Um, but anyway, got lots of stuff to push. This show is for um, musicians and fans alike. It is also for indie bands, rock stars, country stars, agents, managers, um, promoters, producers, engineers, DJs, anybody in the show business, this show is for you guys and the fans. So tonight we got a really cool thing going on besides the uh, fact that we are going to have um, Hollywood Yates on. Now, Hollywood Yates is really fun. He's he's pretty fun to be hanging around with. Anyway, but we have got um, a thing going on tonight. We have a question to ask, and we'd like to have you guys call in. So here is the question that one of our listeners asked earlier today. This question is bold and as ballsy, but this show is bold and as ballsy. So, um, the question is, where is the most daring or interesting place that you have ever had sex? That is right. That is the question of the night. We want you to call in at 760-747-8243. Be ballsy. Give us the truth. Tell us the honest truth, man. Where is the most daring and most uh, crazy, interesting place you've ever had sex? And that did come in from a female, <laughs> and which is okay, you know. And uh, usually guys are think of questions like that, but she was bold and daring. So um, I think her name was Martha or something like that. Anyway, um, so you got to give us a call and let us know. That is that is the thing of the night. Also, I got some things to push real quick before we get Hollywood Yates on the phone. Um, I have a new release out. <coughs> this uh, song is uh, was recorded by Firehouse originally. When I look into your eyes, it was a big rock hit ballad, and I recorded it, re-recorded it um, with uh, some hotshot players out of Nashville, Tennessee. Put it on a uh, t- kind of gave it a little country bit of a country twist and uh, I'd like you to check that out you can check that out on um, either myspace or mark connor's country music.com um, all of that fun stuff everything for sale on con- uh, mark connor's country music.com hats and all that fun stuff too in case you get a chance to get a a mark connor's hat that's they're kind of cool they're really neat actually and also i got to push this too my Mark Connors coffee. This is Snickers Doodle. Mark Connors Snickers Doodle Sweet Morning Brew. It is delicious. It's like a, a blend of um, um, Snickers and uh, coffee. <laughs> yeah. And this is my also my other morning brew. Now I have another another kind of pecan that I don't have in here right now because I have it out on my tour bus and I'm finishing off my bag. Um, but this is all about the country and it is actually um, made to go with the, my CD wherever the hell that is. Oh, there it is right here. See, they kind of match. Can you see that? Kind of cool guitar matches. Actually, that is my uh, Mark Connor signature series guitar also. Which is behind me here. If you guys can see that just a little bit. Um, but um, And you can buy the Mark Connor Signature Series guitar also. Made um, here in America, of course. Actually, it's made right here in Idlewild. Um, just a little bit uh, out by Palm Springs, California. And uh, phenomenal guitars. Um, you guys got to check that out. You can go to markconnorscountrymusic.com or markconnorscountry.com and check that out also. And uh, they're only like four or five grand somewhere in that area, depending on how you uh, 
you want it styled, but it's to your taste, man. We will build your guitar to your exact dimensions, everything. Just they're badass guitars. Um, anyway, uh, so let's get on with this. Let's see here. What are we gonna do? Well, we've got. We have got uh, to get um, Hollywood on the phone. Let's find here Hollywood's telephone number here. Now remember, everybody, um, you can. And you must uh, remember the question is where is the most daring place you have ever had sex? That's right. Be honest with us. You can call in just when uh, uh, we get done with Hollywood Gates and uh, you guys be prepared. So, anyway, let's get Hollywood on the phone here, real quick. All right, Hollywood Gates, we're calling Hollywood here. It's Hollywood. Hollywood Yates. Yes. Mark Connors, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Um, um, we're a little bit better now. Um, <laughs> we had an hour and 50 minutes of audio problems. And we left you sitting out there high and dry on a Saturday night, bro. We really definitely appreciate you joining us still because uh, uh, we were telling a lot of people about you uh, coming up. Now, are you watching the show at this time right now, Hollywood? Uh, I was just uh, clicking back on. Really? And... Yeah, let, let me know when you're on, okay? Um, the um, Real quick, Hollywood Yates, uh, you know, I hate to go all the way back to, but, you know, it helps people recognize who you are in some ways of um, uh, Wolf. On the American Gladiator, right? Yes. And you, you did that for how? Tell us a little bit about that, real quick, so everybody can kind of relate to who you are. Um, well, I was picked uh, to uh, play Wolf on uh, American Gladiators back in 2008 with Hulk Hogan and uh, um, Led Ollie as the host on NBC, and had a blast with that. And, I'm still doing some acting, but now I'm uh, doing more um, more music than anything else. Yeah, I, we understand that you're doing country. Actually, I know, of course, you know, because you and I work together on other things, and you're part of Shiva Entertainment and Shiva Entertainment Artists, which we're proud and honored to always be able to say that. And uh, we stand behind you and promote you all the time. Now, you've been doing country music. You went. When did you go country? Um, I mean, I've, I've done music all my life. I started at uh, seven years old at uh, seven years old as an Elvis impersonator, and then you know, as I was growing up, I started singing different things. Um, you know, I did a lot of Mickey Gilly, Charlie McLean stuff with uh, uh, out in Oklahoma, and then uh, you know Kenny Rogers and Johnny Cash. Just you know, I just kind of did a little bit of everything. And so once the Gladiators ended. Um, I decided to start trying to focus back on music. Uh huh. Cool. So, did you get onto the show yet? Uh, yeah. You it's, did. Uh, it's so, very slow though. Oh, is it really? I don't know. It might be your speed or whatever. I don't know because it goes out pretty it good probably here. Probably is my computer slow. So, so can you see this? Well, I mean, I'm not. It's it's yeah. I just saw you raise your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I'm like a hundred and something miles away from you. I can get away with it right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, we can mess around with Hollywood Yates as long as he's not standing right there. Because when we went through, uh, remember we went through the mall in Nashville, I think like a year ago, did a thing with you out here on the show also um, on Ro Road Stars of Country, actually. And uh, Actually, that was uh, closer to two years almost. Was it two years ago already? Yeah. My gosh, time just goes by too quick, too quick. All right, so what have you been doing over like the last the last two years since I talked to you? Yeah, um, well, I uh, moved back out to California so I could be closer to L.A. I uh, didn't want to really move up into L.A. for the rat race, but um, moved halfway between uh, L.A. and San Diego, and my wife you know, got a good job with a plastic surgeon in Laguna, uh, and Mills, and that way we're, we're close for her to get to work, and then I can run up to L.A. for auditions, and then I uh, put together a band here, and uh, I'll basically 
basically Dana Point area, and we've been playing shows. We actually this last week opened for Colt Ford at the Coach House. Uh huh. Right. Okay. That's cool. How'd that go? That uh, went good. You know, uh, unfortunately, Colt's drummer got sick, and they had to rush him to the emergency room. So uh, Colt wasn't able to put his whole show on. You know, they did a nice acoustic deal, and I mean, the crowd enjoyed it. You know, Colt's a very personable guy. And, has good music, so uh, he still put on a great show. But uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard to come in and follow me acoustically because um, I'm a I'm an animal on stage. And so we we had a great show, had a great time, and you know, but Colt's a good friend, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll be talking with Colt more about maybe doing something with his label and with his company. Mm-hmm. Now, what you you had just put out a release, I think, like about a year ago, didn't you? A new release. Uh, yeah, I put a CD out. Actually, a CD I put out two years, uh, yeah, close to two years ago, but, you know, haven't really uh, put it out in stores or anything. It's just kind of, you know, it's on iTunes and it's on my website, HollywoodGates.com, and mm-hmm. it's on Amazon, different things like that. Uh, I'm actually thinking about kind of doing a re-release and pushing it to radio this next year. Well, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, and you've been doing a lot of stuff out in Nashville, haven't you? Yes, um, actually, when I came out there two years ago, when we did that deal at the mall, I did about 11 shows there during the CMA Fest. Uh, it was a busy week for me. Um, this last year, I uh, hired a band out of there. I didn't bring my band with me, but I hired a band out of there and did uh, four shows at uh, the Just Kickin' Saloon, which was only open for about a month. Um and they ran into some difficulties, I guess, so they're not there anymore. But then I did another show at the Hard Rock stage, and, uh, you know, I always have a great time at the Hard Rock stage. Um, and because of that, I ended up uh, getting a gig. I just went down to Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, um, for the All-Star Country Vacation at the Hard Rock Resort and Casino uh, down there in the Dominican Republic. It was myself and you know, 15 other great artists, um, just to mention a few, Bo Vice, Gwen Sebastian, Laura Bell Bundy, uh, Steel Magnolia, um, Lucas Hogue, Brothers Osborne, Michaela Gordon, and there's a whole bunch of us, and we had a blast down there. Yeah? What'd you do down there? <laughs> oh, we did, we did shows every night, you know, we did an acoustic uh, deal um, on the Wednesday night, just to kind of greet everybody that was coming down there, and then we did, uh, the next night they had a karaoke for the, uh, the resort guests, and myself and Lucas Hogan and Michaela Gordon were the uh, judges, and Laura Bell Bundy hosted it, and then that, later that night we had a Southern Rock night that Bo Vice uh, hosted, and uh, that was a big concert, and then... Um, Oh, shoot, let's see, that would have been Thursday, then Friday, they had a dance, a line dance deal, and everybody came to that, and cool. Saturday night was the big concert, and Jason Michael Carroll was there as well, he mm-hmm. was kind of the headliner, And mm-hmm. but I mean, we were all up on stage just having a good time, and everybody sang two or three songs, and uh, put on a great two, two and a half hour concert for everybody. Man, that must have been awesome. It was a blast. So uh, let me ask you something here. Uh, if if I could ask you what pisses you off about the music industry at this time, um, whether it be working with bands, whether it be um, uh, rehearsals, whether it be the politics and music, whether it be anything, what what is it that um, probably you know? I mean, there's politics and everything, so you know, politics don't bother me so much because, in, you know, you have it in every aspect of life. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If you've got a job for a big corporation, if you want to move up the ladder, you got to play politics. If you're in rodeo, you've got to play the politics. You know, it's, it's that's just anything in life. You know, you, you basically have to make yourself the most popular person in order to get the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people don't know that you, a lot of people don't know that you were a rodeo cowboy. Yeah, I, you know, and that's, and I worked my way, you know, from when I first started rodeoing, people saying, oh, he'll never make it, to making it to the national finals three times, you mm-hmm. know, and, um, you know, was uh, with the bull riders only and uh, worked two of the finals for them, so, or two or three of them, you know, two of them, so I was, you know, two-time world champion bullfighter for BRO, and, you know, and, and I had a great career. I, I'm still doing it. I just got a call a couple of days ago to do 
Hmm. You know, that's that's something that you know I've I've done a great job doing. So my talent has prevailed, but then you also have to you know be nice and talk with the you know rodeo committees and you you know get the crowd on your side and you know so it's all a form of politics. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't just go out and be an ass and you know make a great career. Well, I take that back. I've actually seen a lot of it's been it's been done before. <laughs> <laughs> it has been done before. But, now, okay, so what about band-wise, you know, with, with musicians? What's the biggest complaint that you have with your groups when you're rehearsing, you know? Um, um, we talk about a lot, of the, well, a lot of that stuff. I think with the bands, it's, you know, with rodeo, I was performing on my own. You know, I mean, I, I would have to work with other guys, but, you know, we traveled differently. We, you know, I'd get to a different, you know, rodeo with different guys all the time. With a band, you got all the same guys, and, you know, and you have so many different personalities that, you know, you end up running into egos, uh, you end up running into, you know, people that you can't deal with. Uh-huh. So, you know, for a while, it's like, I don't think I played two gigs in a row with all the same band members. You know, it took me a while when I was living in Arizona to finally come up with the right guys that, you know, finally worked out great. They were all great musicians, you know, that, that was, that's my wolf pack, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, Bobby Earl Hamilton was is my drummer. Uh, David Blakely is my uh, bass player. Um, Robert Payne is my guitar player. A lot of a lot of the same guys that I use for that lineup, right? The same same people. The the lineup that I used for my shows out in Tucson with Mark Chesnut. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say yeah, you use a lot of my guys for yeah. for your band out there. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, Rocky Saren is my keyboard player out there. You yeah. Know, Excellent. You know, I know the whole routine. I went through the whole dang thing with all that lineup too, and it's a great lineup. You got a good band there. Um, oh, yeah. Now, real quick, um, Hollywood. I don't know if you heard the show earlier before you came on. We have uh, an interesting question going on here this evening that uh, we are asking. Uh, that it was actually brought in by some girl, uh, a lady named Martha, I believe her name was, and um, you know we push it to the limit on this show. You know me, I'm kind of like that, and you're kind of like that, too, so I figure we can get away with this bullshit with you, too. This is an anything free speech kind of show. It's for musicians and for uh, country stars, rock stars, and everybody to call in, you know, bitch, moan, and groan, talk about the music industry. That's basically what this show is about. And right. and so we've got a lot of, uh, you know, ladies that listen to, you know, to the celebrity interviews and what have you. So we got this call, and we are supposed to ask everybody, including you tonight, for this interview. <laughs> yes, ladies, I'm uh, I'm a big lady lover, so come on. Cool. All right. All right, well then here it goes. Stand by. The question is It is Hollywood Yates. Where is the most daring and the most interesting place that you have had sex? Uh-huh. Uh. <laughs> See, we knew Hollywood would go for it, man. Hollywood will answer yeah, that. I mean, that's, you know, that's, shoot, that ain't, baby, I mean, that ain't nothing. You know, I, and you can't say on a tour bus because, you know, that's everybody's answer that, on this on this show. Say, that's, <laughs> that's not daring. That's your house. I know. Oh, I mean, that's, that's just your house. Um, Everybody on this show goes, uh, the tour bus. Because uh, <laughs> they're all musicians. So I, In the middle of an a rodeo arena. Yeah. All right. Night, you know, rodeo's over. The rodeo is over. That's good. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, the, the parties are still going on and everything, but you know, you can sneak back into the rodeo arena. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so Hollywood Yates, he has fessed up that the most interesting, most daring place that he has ever had sex at was in the middle of a rodeo arena where he was probably doing a show. 
prior, about two hours, three hours prior. Yes. That's correct? <laughs> that is correct. Oh, Hollywood, man, you're awesome. We always love talking to you, man. We've had you on uh, Road Stars of Country a couple times. Now having you on Backstage Pass. Um, we are broadcasting live around the globe right now with Hollywood Yates. The phones are open, 760-747-8243. That is 760-747-8243. 8243. Let's talk music, man, and call in and tell us, just like Hollywood did, we're the best place, interesting, most daring place that you've ever had sex. Call us right now. Hollywood, thank you so much, sir, for giving us a call. Not a problem, man. And, you know, I, I almost had a better answer for you. The, well, let's go for it. What is it? Well, we, well, it never happened. Oh, but it, it was a fantasy? You know, <laughs> I, I was going to try to do something at the vice president of the United States' house, but we never even got over to the house, though. So. <sighs> Bro. Now, that's oh, ball. Yeah, that's know, ball. What, what? I had heard Willie Nelson smoked pot up on top of it or something. I don't know. It could have been a rumor, but I figured, you know what? I'm going to top that. But That would have topped it. getting over there. Getting laid exactly where now? The vice president's house. The vice president of oh, the United... Room. Uh, the Vice President of the United States of America. Yeah, but, you know, I never got over there, so it never, <laughs> never happened. <laughs> that would have been... That would have been cool. That would have been cool. That would have been something to talk about, huh? <laughs> All right, man, Hollywood Yates, thanks for calling in, bro. Thank you so much. We shall be talking to you again soon. And, again, those phone lines are open for you guys. Thanks, Hollywood. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. No problem. Everybody go to HollywoodYates.com. HollywoodYates.com. Anything else you want to push there? Fantastic. All right, Hollywood, you take care, bro. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you, man. Bye-bye. All right, Hollywood Yates, man. And uh, he did he did answer our question for us. Um, we got to make sure that we're not over-modulating here. It seems like we're over-modulating when I get a little wild and crazy there. We want to push the limit on this show, you guys. So, Hollywood Yates has already admitted to our big question. The, the phone lines are open for you people out there. Now, come on, because uh, I am going to get on Facebook. You watch this. I'm going to get on Facebook, and I am going to start hitting you guys up right online asking you these questions. This big question that Martha, I think that was her name. Was it Martha? We should get try to get Martha to call back in, huh? Did it, did it, do we have her number? Let's try to get Martha to, uh, if you get a chance, Martha, if you're listening, give us a call. <laughs> because um, anybody that would ask that question, we want to find out your answer. <laughs> where was the most wild? Martha, where was the most wild, most interesting, daring place that you had ever had sex. Give us a call right now at 760-747-8243 because we want to know. I don't hear that phone ringing yet by anybody here. Okay, Martha, you're probably on there. You'll you'll get you'll get you get the balls up to call us here shortly. Let's see here. Who can we? Oh, the phone is ringing. We'll see who we got. Hold on one second here. Hello, backstage pass. You are live on the radio. Who is calling, please? This is Martha. Is it? Holy shit! <laughs> it is. <laughs> we didn't think we were going to be able to get you back on the line. Like that, of course, I'm going to come back on. <laughs> so, uh, of course, this is what we have to do. Since you're the one that called in the question, 
Um, Hollywood Yates, I don't know if you obviously were listening to the show. Um, Hollywood Yates admitted um, that he had uh, his most daring, exciting place was in the middle or in the middle of an arena. And uh, that one, that one's understandable with him because he's a, a cowboy and um, a bullfighter for a long time, and he, he's just a, a cowboy. Period. So that's a great place to do it. I would, I wouldn't know. I haven't ever done that. <laughs> anyway, so Martha, um, can we ask how old you are first of all? Um, Wait a minute. For you have to be. Uh, you're in your forties. Okay, because you cannot. I'm warning everybody right now on this show. Um, it is live and it has a 10 second delay, but we also are recording it. So you're going to be on YouTube and all that fun stuff later on. You don't have to admit who you are if you don't want to. Martha's probably full of shit too. Her name's probably Sandy or something like that. <laughs> but uh, Martha is in her 40s. And, you know, they call that the, um, uh, let me know, let, you know, right now, this is an adult show, so there should not be any children on the show right now. It's rated PG because I'm going to guess that Martha is in her fucking 40s. Well, yes, that would be correct, Martha. <laughs> and I don't know if I can talk the middle of a rodeo arena. Okay, well, we're going we're gonna to find out in a second um, if you'll answer us. But, uh, okay, so, Martha, you're in your 40s. And um, the big question is, where is the most daring or most interesting place that you have ever had sex? What do you think it's going to be? Should I give us a drum roll? No, I don't think I'll give us a drum roll. Let's just hear what she has to say. Um, well, one uh, spot that comes to mind is, uh, is a, uh, under, on a stage under the spotlight. On a stage? Is that what you said? Yes. Under a spotlight? Yes. Um, so I'm going to presume you were dating a musician. <laughs> gotcha. That would be correct. Is that correct? Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Because <laughs> under a spotlight. All right. That's pretty. That's pretty. There was nobody there, right? Nobody else was there. You're on a stage in a, in a, like a concert play, a, like a, where, a bar or something or what? An empty concert venue. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, because we're having a hard time hearing you there. I'm sorry. That's okay. All right. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, well, that that was pretty good. So we got two people now that have admitted to two unusual places. I guess it's not unusual if you were out with a, if, with a musician, I guess, but um, going out with a musician. But uh, okay, just out of curiosity, uh, what's your phone number? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm not going to give that out on the air. <laughs> it's all right. I'm not asking for it, really. I was just joking. <laughs> I don't flirt with uh, the ladies on the air. Um, I could get in trouble for that. Yeah. It, anyway, okay, Martha. Is Martha your real name, actually, too? We want to know that, too. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> all right, Martha, thanks for calling in. We really appreciate it. Martha has uh, uh, told us that she is now um, had had admitted... That's, that's not her name, first of all, and um, but she admitted that she had sex on a stage with a spotlight on her, and obviously she was dating a musician. Okay, so that's two down. Nice little interview with Hollywood Yates there. Let's see, who could we call right now? And, you know, because that's what I love about Facebook here. I, some of it, you know, I, I really, I can't even can't stand Facebook, actually. But I like some of the cool things that it does because it lets me um, see who's online. And we get to do our radio espionage. Um, who should we go for? Colt Chambers. Colt Chambers is on. Uh, he's probably playing somewhere right now, though. Let's see who else we could get, because, you know, we don't want to... Lunchbox isn't on. We've been trying to get Lunchbox on the show for quite a while. Um, he is a musician, and Tony Lee... Tony, we've been trying to get Tony on the show, too. Where the hell is everybody tonight? Everybody's gone. Everybody's out partying. Judy Pompicello, do we want to talk with her? No. Who can we pick on? 
Nobody's online right now. Oh, man, that really sucks. Okay, well, anyway, um, I do have some things I have to push real quick. And I also have some uh, news. I don't know if you guys heard uh, about the guy that uh, uh, attacked or, st- or stalked Madonna. That's right. He just recently today got um, sentenced to a year um, in prison for um, stalking Madonna. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Let's see who else we can pick on. I'm looking for somebody to pick on here that we could actually just... Oh, let's try. Who is this? Leonardo Mura? I don't even... I don't know who that is. Does anybody know who that is? Phones are open. 760-747-8243. And um, I was asked earlier about the music that we were playing. And I want to make sure that I give these gentlemen a... um, um, a big push. They, this band is pretty awesome. They're called Symbolic. Symbolic. The album is called Never Time, and these gentlemen all rehearse. Um, at my studio, um, Shiba Entertainment Backstage Studios in uh, San Diego area, and uh, they're here about three nights a week, and they are actually getting ready to go on the road with UFO and do some shows with them, and um, I'm definitely going to see that. I'd like to see that anyway, and they had done some stuff with Michael Shanker last time that he was in town also. And I believe that they had opened up for a couple of people, Aria Speedwagon or somebody like that. Just some of the some of the stuff that's come local. Ah. Ah. So it's been one hell of a night. We had problems with our audio. And um, so we're looking for phone calls. It's Saturday night, 760-747-8243. I'm going to leave you with the song here for... Um, by uh, this cool band Symbolic as we take a three minute about a four minute and 45 second break the phones are open at 760-747-8243 we'd like you to call and remember the question tonight is is where is the most daring interesting place that you have ever had sex the two answers that we have right now, one is from Celebrity Hollywood Yates, where he has said that he has, you know, it was in a um, in the middle of an arena. And they were trying to go have sex at the vice president of the United States' home on the roof, which he wouldn't tell us which one he was talking about. But um, that would have been interesting to know. Everybody's on Adam. There's Adam. Adam, we want to talk with Adam. Where are you, bro? Here we go. Let's give Adam a call. He's giving me a phone number. Let's see what we can do here. And then we'll go on break. Let's see what happens here with Adam. We were, we've been trying to get Adam on the show for a couple of days here. This is called Rock and Roll Espionage, where we go to Facebook and we see if you're anywhere around. Hi, this is Adam Harville. Sorry, missed your call. If you leave me your name and number, I'll get back with you. If you call in a reference to the Locked and Loaded Band, please leave me a message on here, or you can reach me at adamharville at me.com. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Oh, Adam! Harvell! This is Mark Connors from Backstage Pass. How you doing, bro? We are live on the radio right now all around the globe. We were trying to get you on the phone, bro, because we want to talk to you about your music, about your band, about what you're doing, what's going on, all that fun stuff. Give us a call if you get a chance. I know it's a Saturday night, man, but this is called Rock and Roll Espionage where I go to Facebook and I narrow you guys down, I hunt you guys down, 
and I talk to you about music. Give us a call, bro. We're looking forward to talking to you. Adam Harvell, you are being requested to call us at 760-747-8243 at Backstage Pass Music Connection. Yeah! <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm having fun. Who else can we call? Let's see. I, I like. To, I just like to do it this way because it's, it's really cool. You know, it's like you... Uh, I'll probably get a, a, a text from him here in just a second saying that he's at some party or something. Who else we got here? Jimmy. Who's Jimmy? Jimmy Popesky? Let's send him a note. Jimmy, we are live. Call us. <laughs> and let's talk music. We'll see what he does. I, I mean, they're all—they're always surprised because I call them, you know. And, and here I am. I'm—I'm I'm on live, you know, live radio and TV. We'll see if he—if uh, uh, he gives us a call. But if he doesn't—if he doesn't give us a call, it's okay because there's 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 other people that we can harass. <laughs> can you believe we're actually? We are we are harassing people. That's not cool. Paula Martin, where are you, girl? You're supposed to be calling in and talking to us about your favorite rock star that you've ever met. Yep, Michelle Broadway, the same thing. I bet you didn't know you somebody would uh, start a radio station and just do uh, the um, basically the uh, the news off of Facebook. Even are you nosy? If you're nosy, I can help you. I can tell you what people are doing. Let's see what Denise McDonald, McDaniel is doing right now. She is drinking probably coffee, doing nothing. Uh, no, no. Freebird, Freebird, my book, Turn It Up by Ron Eckerman. Get your book at www.turnitupbook.company. Freebird. See, I'm reading the news right off the damn uh, friggin' uh, Facebook here. Let's see. What does Scott Hamilton have to say today? Scott was um, Scott was on the show yesterday. He's from Tucson um, with a band called Wound Too Tight. And a gentleman that I've known basically most of my life. And uh, he was on the show. And he's sporting his new trailer. And it's pretty cool. Lots of news here. It's kind of interesting to see what people put on the news. I mean, on the Facebook. It's like, do we all want to know this stuff? Let's see. What What is a real biker? Now, that's something that I, I definitely uh, would like to find out. Biker or not.com. What is a real biker? It is a stereotype. Leave your thoughts in the comments. And, uh, okay, it is a stereotype. Sh shit. I'm going to have to say that whoever wrote that is uh, not a biker. Because if you're a biker, you know it is a lifestyle. It is not a stereotype. Um, if you ride a motorcycle a lot, um, you're a biker. Doesn't mean you have to have a big long beard or be in a gang or a lawyer or any or a rock star or anything else, man. If you've got a bike and you ride it a lot, you're most likely a biker. Um, are you a troublemaker biker? I doubt it. Uh, about as much trouble as I am. Let's see. Brad Henley. Now, Brad Henley is a, a country singer out of Nashville, and um, Brad had um, actually I produced and directed. And actually did a, some karate stunts and some um, driving stunts in his video that he'd shot um, out at my ranch in Nashville about uh, five, six years ago. And, uh, man, Brad Henley is a really, really good singer. He's got really good songs. And you can catch him, I believe it is, as, as at bradhenley.com. Um, and uh, you can Google him, but he's got a lot of good material, and he did a really good video. Um, here, Who do we have here? Adam, calling soon. Oh, well, that's cool. Adam's going to call us. Um, that is my... Um, our, our, let's see. 
let's say thanks over to the office in uh, Anaheim Hills area. We've got um, people spread out all over the place. Anyway, uh, let's see what else here. Now, Tony Lee Blankenberg um, has worked with some, uh, he's uh, like a booking agent, works with several type, you know, um, bar type of groups and what have you. Um, he would like to see everybody repost this out of respect for those that gave us freedom and speech and religion and much more. Show that you recognize their sacrifice by responding to his uh, Facebook um, posting. And um, I'm getting some support from production here in Anaheim, California. I appreciate that, too. That's Miss Jen. She works with us. She has the Jen Show. <laughs> you ever heard of the Jen Show? It. Uh, I think she, she. I think what she does is she makes um, phones ringing. Who the hell's calling me? Let's see here. Backstage pass. You are live on the radio. Who's calling, please? No, Martin is Adam. Hey, Adam, how you doing? I'm pretty good, man. How about you? We've been trying to get a hold of you. Oh, man, I'm talking about Adam on the phone. But, um, I think somebody called me and I said, man, that must be more. So. Yeah, cool, cool, man. We really appreciate you, you calling in. We wanted to talk to you because, see, what we did was we, we committed, you know, rock and roll espionage on you. You know what that is yet? Have you we told you that? Yeah, just kind of hit people up on Facebook and call in. Hell yeah. We don't want, we're not going to wait for you guys to call us. We're going to call you. <laughs> hey, you, you know what? I hope you don't mind. You don't mind, do you? No, man. Okay, cool. Do you, are you, you, got, you got a minute to talk? Yeah. Okay, so, Adam, first of all, we've got a couple things going on tonight, uh, but I want to talk to you about your group real quick. Tell me about what you do, who you're with, what band you're with, where you're from, um, any CDs that you want to push, um, any of that kind of good, fun stuff. Uh, I play with a country group called Lock and Loaded out of Salisbury, North Carolina. Um, we do kind of like cover tunes of like uh, country, southern rock, beach, pop, kind of cover it all. So, um, currently, we kind of are pushing a CD right now. We're trying to actually get into the studio to get it. But we've got two two singles right now on uh, our website. It's LockandLoadedBand.com. I don't know if they're up right yet or not, but we should be putting those up this week. So. And you're out of where? We're out of Salisbury, North Carolina, uh, about 35 miles, uh, about 40 miles southeast of Charlotte. Wow, that's pretty cool. And have you played the Nashville scene? Um, no, I haven't been out in Nashville. i got a couple buddies out there. Uh, one of them is actually on the road with Gary Allen, and uh, it's uh, pretty cool. I know um, several guys out that way. Uh -huh. So you got you got a CD coming out? you got stuff coming out? you got stuff out already? Uh, any rate? Um, airplay we stuff? Just got, we just got no airplay, man. It's just totally hard to get around bands around here to actually get anything happening because everybody, like you said, uh, gets down on the radio and you hear the same songs every day on 90. It's just you listen for about an hour and a half, and you can about shut the radio off and get the songs for the rest of the day. Isn't that bullshit? Yeah, it's just it's, it's mind-boggling. I mean, it's just uh -huh. this is a free speech zone, though, so you can you can curse if you need to if you get really upset. <laughs> it upsets me. It upsets me. That's why I started this show because I want all of us to be able to talk to each other and uh, you know feed each other and um, you know this show is uh, obviously you, you you're a listener of the show. Is that true? <laughs> so you know that this show is about um, indie bands, rock stars, country stars, producers, managers, agents, you know, booking agents, talent agents, uh, solo artists, and fans. And uh, we want to share stuff. Okay, so now you're you've got you stuff you you're working on. You said, or to, yeah, we're actually trying to get a CD out right now. Um, we're actually there's a uh, local hunt TV show that just got picked up on Direct TV, and we're doing a theme song for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. On outdoors, we're doing it um, right. for them right now, but. Are you guys are you guys pursuing a are you pursuing a um, record deal? Um, we're, we're looking for something that route. It's just um, just nobody right now around this time just doesn't have the money to help back or put us into a situation where we can get anything like that. It's just everybody's like, well, here, hand us three thousand dollars and we'll do your CD. And I'm like. It's kind of hard to come up with that money one lump sum all at one time. Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of people don't realize that you know you've got to put money into your career if you're going to be serious about it, right? That's the truth. Yeah. I mean, and uh, just like put money into a situation to play, we got close to about a fifty or sixty thousand dollar PA system played a gig this summer that wasn't under a contract gig. 
in the power stuff and actually took out four of our amplifiers and pop 218 and uh, has completely demolished our DBX job rack. So now we've got about $7,000 worth of gear that I have to repair so we can get back out and start playing gigs. But thank God we got a B rig and a C rig. So. Uh-huh. That's a real bummer, man. You know, I was actually uh, out on the road. I think about last year, sometime some band uh, stopped us, and we were talking. And uh, you know, we were filling up the bus, and they were telling us that their whole trailer was sto- stolen off the back of their bus. Man, that's up. Everything gone. That's just terrible. Hey, let me ask you this: um, you've you, you you've been in bands most of your life, probably. Yeah, I started. I started playing when I was four. I'm 20, 23 now. So. Uh-huh. Oh, you're fuck. You're old as shit. <laughs> Tell me about it, man. I'm a young and trying to make a make a living in this business. <laughs> what do you do besides um, be a musician? If you don't mind, if I ask, if I can, are you a cop? Oh, yeah, man. You can ask. Uh, what I do is I teach the college for the week. I got a couple students that uh, teach right here out of the house and just um, try to show my love of music and teach it to others without them having to pay fifty, sixty, seventy dollars a month for lessons. Uh huh. Cut them a deal. Let's tell them, hey, listen. Do what you can afford. Most of the time, it's twenty, thirty, forty bucks if I can, and I try to teach them. I mean, it's, it's a passion that I love to do. I love to play music, and I'd rather pass it off to somebody else. Dude, I could say ten years down the road, they're in Nashville playing. I might, like, I taught that kid. Mm-hmm. So, it's mm-hmm. all about trying to pass it on. Mm-hmm. So, do you like coffee? Yeah, I like coffee, man. Did you see my Mark Connors coffee? Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I've seen that. You were advertising yesterday. I'm like, man, I like chocolate with that. <laughs> <laughs> we we committed country music espionage too. Um, when I had the coffee out, we went and put a whole bunch of coffee up on people's buses. Yeah, you're, uh, you're talking about. That. I seen that the other day on the. Uh... That's the way to do it, man. You know, I tell you, you got to do everything you can nowadays to try to make it out there. What's the ballsiest thing you think you've ever done to try to push your music? Oh man! Without self-incriminating the free speech it's a free speech radio show here bro and it's all about honesty and it's about helping people because I'll admit the balls I'll tell you mine okay so that way we're, we're going to be even right off the bat my ballsiest thing that I ever did to try to get somebody to listen to me well I guess I did too many of them but one of them sticks <laughs> one of them sticks out a little bit um, was is I used to park cars in Hollywood at a valet parking and um, we would wait for all the big rock stars to come in and park their cars and you know i mean i'd end up driving all these big rock stars cars tom petty and all these you know this is when i was really young and um and we'd stick you can see how young i was is we would stick uh cassette tapes in their cassette players and leave them there that's pretty cool man you know and and leave it to where they just right when they turn their car on and drive off <laughs> we'd be smiling shutting the door and you know he's driving off listening to my song so, you gotta do it tight, yeah, you gotta do. Okay, so what was your ballsiest one? What did you do to get your stuff heard? Oh man, because um, you got to do a lot to get heard. That's just one thing I've never really, really had to do. I mean, most people that hear us live, they just kind of look at right there on the spot. I mean, it, I yeah. never really had to do anything like uh, I know one band. I'm not gonna mention names on them, but took uh, took songs that were originally recorded from other bands and actually stripped the vocals off of it so they vocals on top. And uh, for that, I was a demo. I thought that was pretty cool. Or funny, but uh, wasn't cool at the time. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Let me, let's me let get this straight here. You know of a band. You're not going to say names. That's cool. But you know of a band that got their hands on master tapes. Is that correct? No, no. They, they just kind of like went out to Walmart, bought a CD, and put it inside some like Krako kind of system to take the vocals off. And then sing vocals and harmony lines over the top. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> that's an awful lot of work. Yeah. I went around myself. Here, I'll tell you another one I did, which was pretty cool. This works, too, um, is I went to Walmart, <clears throat> to all of the Walmarts around the country, which I think there's something like, um, I don't know, like 10,000 of them. <laughs> and... Uh, and I went and stuck my picture on the back of Country Weekly magazine. Can you see that? Huh? Can you see that? Oh, no, I'm not even know where it is. Oh, you're not? Yeah, well, I'm holding up this magazine where I'm on the back cover of Country Weekly magazine, Dolly Parton's on the front cover. 
And it's really funny. Somebody said to me, man, how did you do that? And I said, yeah, I went to uh, all of the stores and uh, super glued them on. And uh, that's kind of ballsy, but I didn't really do that. Actually, we paid a shitload of money to do that. <laughs> you have to invest money. How much money do you think you got in your career right now at 24 years old? Oh, God, dude. I could probably already buy a car and a house. A car and a house worth? Yeah, easily. I mean, just PA gear alone just passed. I mean, we're all musicians. I mean, it gets to the point where you buy something just like I had a $6,000 pedal board for all the pedals, and you play through it for a year. It sounds great, and then something else comes out, and you like, sell all this crap and buy something mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Okay. And um, so let me ask you then this this question then really quick. Since you got so much money into your career, you've worked your butt off all these years, which, you know, I'm twice your age, so no, I didn't say that. But I'll talk to you again in another 25 years, no, 27 years or so, and, um, and ask you again how much money you've gotten into it and, you know, what you're going to say then. But if... If you've got that much money into your career, all that blood and sweat and tears, you've worked your butt off, man. You've gone through through bands like Girlfriends. You do if you're a stud muffin, um, and you know you've gone crazy. You've done everything you can, heart and soul, blood, sweat, and tears out there. Um, put your money into it, and then somebody downloads your song. They don't even pay you ninety nine cents for it. How does that make you feel? It's, it's, it's kind of upsetting and gut wrenching, both at the same time. But it's God, I can't remember. There was one artist that said this. They said, uh, I think it was Joe Bonamassa. He said it on one of his um, radio interviews on YouTube. He said, I'd rather somebody download my whole entire CD and come to a show and thoroughly enjoy it than pay a CD and hate it. And that, that kind of spoke to me. I mean, it's, it's, I guess I kind of look at it young, this, this young of my life. I said, I'm not looking so much at the money, per se, right now. Uh -huh. It's just doing it for the love. Well, that's what, it's, yeah. It's so great to be like some of these guys out in Nashville right now, just like uh, Blake Shelton and all them guys. I mean, they, they got money. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool to that point, but right now it's just kind of the point that I'm at. It's just I do it for the love of the music. Mm -hmm. Well, people don't really realize that, you know, you, you don't get money right off the bat. You know, it's not like, like it used to be years and years ago when they, you'd sign a record deal and they'd give you a million bucks, they'd give you a house, they'd give you a car, they'd give you a truck, they'd give you this, they'd give you, they'd give you a girlfriend, they'd give you, they'd give you a studio, they, everything they give you, which they own. And people don't understand that. And sometime I'd like to talk about that. And actually, when we get off the phone here, I might even discuss that, how record labels work and how um, they screw you over and how people think that they're getting something out of them when really they're all they're giving it back. It's funny because when you sign a deal with somebody, just a real quickie on this, is that you know you sign a deal with them and they go, okay, here's uh, we're going to give you uh, $250,000. And you go, oh, my God, that's so cool. But you know, 50 grand of it's going for this. Another 100 grand is going for the recording another 20 grand's going for this no 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 the funny thing that you find out is that you later on find out that all of that money was spent on companies that the record label that signed you they own those companies so if you don't read the fine print man you're just a clown standing up in a clown outfit like. exactly so it's really hard, you know, to even get a deal out there. So that's why I asked you, are you guys seeking a record deal at this time? Or are you guys doing what a lot of guys are doing nowadays, going independent, you doing your website, your MySpace, your Facebook, all that fun stuff, selling off of the Internet and, you know, selling at shows? Yeah, that's, that's basically what we're doing at this point. I'm out in a little small kind of studio, and we just kind of do songs in there and just kind of put them out like that. I mean, it just pays the... The bulk end cost of what you would put into a record and have to pay somebody just to go in. Once you pay for a record, two or three thousand dollars, you got some guy saying, Well, here, I can make it better for an extra twelve thousand or twelve hundred. And before you know it, you got six, seven thousand dollars developed in a twelve song demo or CD that might last you a year. Mm hmm. Exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of grateful right now the thing that I play with everybody gets along and it's, it's almost like a family type thing. We all trust each other. Uh, it's just, we're going to play a gig. We don't have to sit here and ask, well, how much is this gig? We know at the end of the night we're going to get paid. And uh, it's just, it's nice to play in an atmosphere like that that you don't have to second guess yourself and worry about it. Mm -hmm. What's your, what's your, your job. what's your biggest gripe in the music industry? Um, just that so many bands out there that's just saturated the market to club owners. And it just comes to the point, just like I was talking to you yesterday, I'm sending a message saying that I had a club call me up 
and asked us how much we'd come out play. And I quoted her 1200 bucks. He called me the next day. After already giving me the date, he called me back the next day. He said, oh, I'm sorry. I found somebody else who could do it for half that price. And I found out I talked to that band, and he undercut them. I think he finally had somebody in there to come play for like 150 or 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, it's just, it, it kills us in the market scene that's trying to go out and promote our stuff and promote our band. I mean, Next time that happens to you, next time that happens to you, bro, tell him to call me, and or I'll call him and tell him that I'll do it for a hundred bucks less, and then I won't show up. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't try to burn too much, man. I'm just, I just kind of go with the flow on it, and if the club kind of does that to me, I'm just kind of more less reluctant to book with them the next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right now we're we're blessed to have work. I mean, it's uh, we took the whole time month of November off just for December. I think we got six or seven shows there, and. Just uh, trying to build the market scene back up. It's just past few months, man. Around our area, country bands just popped out the woodwork. Really? I um, mean, it's just country scene's flooded. I mean, we've got several, several good country bands out there to compete with, and I mean, it, it makes us better players too because we're always constantly have to redo our country repertoire and actually branch out and do other things. And the other the other bands are 100 percent country doing new country. And we're sitting there going, well, what can we do to be different on the market? Because you basically have to be a chameleon in this business and cover it all. Mm-hmm. What kind of what, just, what kind of venues are you guys performing right now? Um, so it's kind of like private parties, weddings, um, certain bar scenes and club venues. Um, but most of the money makers that we're doing right now is weddings and private parties. That's our easily two, three thousand dollar job. Right. Yeah. I was just going to ask you for the guys that are spread out around the world, around the country that listen to the show. Um, you know, it's it's nice to to find out what's happening in other parts of the country. What's the norm um, for you know paycheck for four or five piece band, country band um, playing? You know, a, a bar, a regular bar. What are they paying out there? Anywhere between six fifty and an easy thousand, you can cover it. I mean, and the thing that I really don't understand is when a club owner asks you, "Well, how good are you?" and you hand them a demo, and they're like, "Well, anybody can sound good." Well, granted, but that's a live demo I just handed you. And then the next question out of their mouth is, "How many people you have bring into a club?" Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, I honestly think that it's not a band's responsibility to pack a club if a club has a follow. up that's right a, yeah. a lot of people look different on that they think the fans should have the fall and I agree too but I think it should be a 50-50 split yeah it should it's it's their business the thing is is that they know that you know they want to sell beer and the more people that get in there the more people drink beer you know and of course we understand that but you know what it's not our job to be promoters we are entertainers yeah, I totally agree with you we don't we don't pay for their advertising we're not supposed to pay for you know promotions and publicity we're not even supposed to, we're really not even supposed to pay for food i don't know what's happened to you know the industry it's like anything else has fallen apart you know um in the old days there was writers well there's still writers but every writer i've ever signed even with my own group on the road there's been changes that were made at the last minute sometimes you just don't get certain things and um you know they're supposed to feed you food and they're supposed to um have hotels for you and they're supposed to have a hotel for your bus driver and they're supposed to have a driver for you you know to get back and forth from the hotel to the show the venues and stuff they're supposed to have lights and they're supposed to have sound and they're supposed to have their own publicity and just, just like you said on all that that's, that's one thing I 100% do on anything that I do book is a contract I have a full four page contract signed out and I make sure the club owner has a copy and I have a copy right now what do you do when, what, what do you do if anybody stiffs you how, how do you enforce um, a contract for such a small amount um, obviously you know it's in, in most states that would be considered um, you know small claims court basically uh, basically we, we have a lawyer that we deal with um, that I've contacted on it. He's actually helped me draw up the contracts and stipulation that if anything does happen to me, um, that basically they take over and they help us out get it. Uh-huh. Uh, it's, um, it's definitely any, any band that's actually starting out and trying to do things, do as much as you can in contracts because it will save your butt. Because I remember playing for clubs and they said, oh yeah, sure, we'll give you 600 bucks. And at the end of the night, they're like, oh, this has been back four or five years ago. But they'll come up to the end of the night and say, well, we didn't make that much on bar tab and Right. And bring enough people. So now, actually, you owe us for the food and drinks that you just drank throughout the night. Yeah, isn't that amazing? And you know, they try to put you at their mercy. 
you know, all the time. Promoters and, and club owners try to put you at their mercy, and they know that you're in there. They say, okay, well, we'll give you half down like agreed, and then we'll give you the rest when you get here. Um, and then you know, you can't find the guy for two hours, and then all of a sudden they go, well, why don't you have lunch? Uh, Mr. Jimbo, whatever his name, will be back in a couple hours. Have lunch. Get yourself all set up. Um, do your sound check, whatever. He'll have your other half when he gets in. Uh, oh, oh, no, it's showtime, and still he's not there. And, oh, well, just go ahead and get on stage. Don't worry. He'll be here in just a few minutes. Then the night goes through, um, and the show's over, and you're walking up to the guy that he pops up, you know, halfway through your last part of your set. <laughs> your last part of the set and and all of a sudden he can't pay you yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've been very lucky not to have anything like that I mean, we've been dealing with um, basically a club rotation where we play about the same clubs every month and they just hire us home and, like we'll be at one club one weekend and the next club the next weekend and almost every single one of them I'd say at least 99% of them at the end of the night they come up to you and say hey thank y'all we made great on both halves here's your paycheck uh-huh. we've never had to chase down a paycheck that's great. How many how many pieces are in your group? Uh, we're four pieces. Four piece, and you're playing country or um, most covers, I guess, a mix of covers and some originals. Yeah, we, we uh, try to do anything from um, Jason Aldean to the Beach Boys. Um, we do beach music, country music, southern rock, blues. Um, try to cover the, the aspect of everything. Uh huh. That's pretty cool. So, do you know um, is do you know of any groups that need publicity? Because you know what we'd like to do is we'd like to get them on the show. And here's another thing that I'd like to do with you also um, is uh, at any time when you're doing shows, performing anywhere on a Saturday, um, m make sure that we know about it and then get on the show live from the venue. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I know you said, uh, I think it was the, uh, last week or the other day, it might have been that you said you're set up for Skype. And I know all of us have iPads and iPhones and all that stuff. And it's just uh, easy to do stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be set up with that probably next week, all ready to go. As you can see, I, well, you don't have a computer in front of you right now. I got a big screen behind me that is for that purpose. And um, yesterday, we didn't even have all the audio set up. It sounded like crap, and <laughs> it looked like crap. But it was a test testing. So you know, tonight's our first you know Saturday night and everything. But yeah, we're going to do the Skype thing and and spread it around. You know, because it's really cool because. You can be you could be in that city. You're in where Atlanta or no? No, we're in Charlotte. You're Charlotte, okay? In Charlotte, near Charlotte area. Yeah, right. I was out there not about a year ago. Anyway, um, uh, you could be there, and we could have a band in San Diego, and then another one in Toronto, Canada, one in New York, one in Florida, one in Phoenix, and everybody that night all gets on live and broadcasts, you know, their show before they're going on and pumps it up and you know tells people about the band and what have you and do interviews right there at their venues. So it's it's going to be a cool thing, you know. Mention it to some of the bands. We'd like to have more bands on the show, and um, and that's what we're here for, man. We're here to help. Is there anything that you want to talk about? Um, I was just going to ask you a question. Um, back, I think it's about two years ago. Um, that wasn't me, man. Uh, uh I didn't do it. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> How was your uh, schedule? Like, if you sit here and look at your schedule back two years ago, I know I can look at mine. From about 2000, and I was hitting you know, between 230, 240 shows a year. And now, it's all we can do to try to get four or five shows a month. Um, same situation. I. I was out on I was out on uh, promotional tours for about two years straight, and um, all over this country doing stuff. And now it's it's just so dead. I mean, like I said, it, a lot of these bars they they went and bought karaoke machines, and now they got these people coming up, you know, and singing all night long, getting drunk and all that stuff, and that's their you know their thing. There, that's their entertainment. And and if you don't want to, the bands that don't want to play or get paid anyway, that's what they're doing. Uh, they'll take you if you'll play for j dirt cheap. And right now, if you're getting 60, 650 a night, you said, out there? Yeah. That's pretty good, actually. Because um, most of the bands where I'm seeing, you know, that are playing the bars um, are getting about 450 and And then the top notchers, you know, that are the regulars that really bring in the crowds, even though they're local bands and what have you, they're making about 750 but they're also, um, you know, drinking it up and uh, eating it up. And, you know, you know how it is. So, um, that's one thing. Facebook, like you said, it's just a humongous asset tool for any group that's trying to publicize things. I and mean, then things where you can make a post and send it out to like 1,200 or 1,500 people and say, hey, we'll be here this weekend. Uh huh. That, that helps. And, uh, 
Facebook invitations. I mean, that just helps so much. Yeah, it does. It does help. Um, any politics that you got to gripe about in the music industry? No, I just uh, wish we could just get paid more. I mean, that's, that's about everybody's gripe. I mean, it's just, like you said, you just bust your butt so much and try to get where you're at. And it's just like, you go and spend all this money in your stuff. And it's just like your club pay just keeps dropping down. And it's just, it kills you. It just makes you think, well, I mean, really, if I'd have been smart. I just started 10 years ago and just said, you know, hell with music, start writing music, start writing lyrics and push that stuff out because from what I see, you can make a lot more money in writing material and selling it out than you would ever play music. Oh, yeah, so for sure. For sure. It's kind of good that way, so. Uh huh. The writers, the writers make the money. That's for sure. You know, and the money's in uh, for the bands. You know, your money's in touring and playing and trying to sell CDs. There, it's a good thing that nowadays. You know, I mean, I remember twenty years ago, um, you couldn't. Uh, I'd put out a CD, and you know, um, out of uh, I got twenty five cents out of that, and then by the time I ended up with my money, actually, I'd end up with a nickel per sale. That's that's ridiculous. Now you get basically almost what ninety two percent of the sale, depending on who you're sharing your, you know, your sales with, and whoever's distributing you, and whoever you're selling through, you know, Amazon.com stuff like that. But now that's the way to go. And I keep telling bands all the time, don't even waste your time trying to get a record deal. They're going to screw you over. Um, they're going to tie you up. Um, I've seen them take such great talent, and I and I'll tell you right now just about every big country star that has ever come out of Nashville was thrown out of the record labels at first. They were told, go home. You can't sing. Gretchen Wilson, Garth Brooks, uh, Taylor Swift, all kinds of people. They were said, go home, man. You're never going to make it. And they're the biggest stars in the world now. You know, it's hard to, to get anything going with those people anymore. They're not putting money out anymore. Um, the, and the people that you're seeing right now that are on the radio and that are real big, those deals were made actually about you know four or five years ago when those people went on artist development deals in the first place and paid them for that too. That's true. Yeah. So you know, I, if there's anything that we could ever do for you, please let us know. That's what we're here for. So any of you bands also um, that uh, out there listening and catching the show, this is live right now, broadcasted around the globe. Um, radio and television, but also it's recorded, and so you can see the show afterwards too. And um, we finally got you to call in. Hey man, I appreciate you. Let me uh, let me call back in if you're ever in Charlotte. Let me know, man. I'll buy you beer. You know, that's a deal, bro. All right, man. Thanks a lot for calling in, and uh, we are looking for more calls at seven six zero. Thanks a lot, bro. Take care. All right, man. Hey man, you too, dude. 760-747-8243. We are looking for calls about music. You're supposed to be calling all of the bands that you know and saying, hey, you know what? There's this guy named Mark Connors. He's got a show called Backstage Pass, Backstage Music Connection, and uh, that we are helping um, musicians do all kinds of cool things. I gotta watch my mod modulation here. It looks like I'm pegging it out a little bit. Don't want to do that. It's all new to us here. This uh, stuff that we're doing, uh, this equipment and everything. Um, I'm used to, obviously, used to being um, interviewed live and stuff like that through my music career and uh, a martial arts career and some television work and some acting and all that fun stuff. I've done lots of interviews live but i i've performed live even which is really freaking hard to do because if you screw up you're screwed there's nothing you can do about that um nothing changes and um and even the delay doesn't help you too much <laughs> and uh, but i'm not used to talking for three hours live so i'm running out of shit to say so i think i'm just gonna go take a piss no i'm not gonna do that uh, I think I'm going to go smoke. No, I'm not going to do that either. I think I'm going to go. Sh no, I'm not going to do that either. What I am going to do is wait for somebody to call after I take a break here. You're supposed to be calling us right now. Where is the most daring and the most interesting place that you have ever had sex? And um, uh, Hollywood Yates, we did an interview with him just a few minutes ago, about a half an hour ago or something like that. Hollywood Yates, Wolf from Gladiator, country singer, celebrity. 
hot shot, big mean guy. I made faces at him because I'm like 110 miles away from him. He can't reach me from here. At least I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but uh, uh, he told us that uh, the most exciting, um, daring place that he had had sex was in the middle of a rodeo arena. And then also we had Martha call us, which she was the girl that actually um, called in with the question. And she had sex, obviously, with a musician on stage <laughs> with uh, a spotlight on him. Cool, man. <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a three-minute break. You are watching and listening to Backstage Pass, Backstage Music Connection, broadcasted live around the globe on this beautiful Saturday, November the 10th, 2012. We had Hollywood Gates on the show, and we have had uh, other people. We are going to take a short, short break here. We will be back. I'm going to leave you right now with some more music from this kick band. And, um, and then I've got other stuff uh, to go over, but uh, I'll show you um, Symbolic's CD real quick. This is Symbolic, the band that you're listening to right now on the show. They rock. We shall be back in about five minutes. We are going to stay on the air with music. Symbolic right here on Backstage.
cool. We are back. That is symbolic. We push local bands, independent bands. We want to talk to you guys about music. I need to hit another light here real quick. Sorry. There we go. I am back. You are watching Backstage Pass, Backstage Music Connection, brought to you live, broadcasted around the globe on this beautiful Saturday, November 12th, 12,000, or yeah, 2012, sorry, 12,002, yeah. I wish things would be better, I think, hopefully. As uh, we move along here, um, again, you're supposed to be uh, calling in. Where is the most daring and most interesting place you have ever had sex? So give us a call. Come on, grow some balls and give us a call and tell us where it was. Girls, guys, we don't care. It doesn't matter. You can even make a fake name like whatever Martha or whatever her name was. You know darn well that wasn't Martha. Martha. And we were talking earlier about pri- pirating music. That sucks. You know, that people um, are... And, and we all do it, you know. Um, we work really hard. Musicians uh, work really hard to get our music out to people. And um, then uh, people don't pay for it. Um, even when it's just 99 cents. Can't you guys take just a little time there, please? And spend the 99 cents. Because we work really hard. Um, we put our dreams out on the line. We put our livelihood out on the line. It, it causes divorces <laughs> that we try so hard to um, um, make our careers um, good for you guys and um, hope that you enjoy our music and our talent. And there's a lot of talented people out there, too, that um, bands don't, uh, that you never get to see. Um, and, um, I see lots of them, um, because, oh, what do we got going on here? 